Outside, lions and bombers, you hear them inching in, plaster collision, head bangs wall three times before it is arrested, purple blossoms beneath the forehead, painful plum, the sugar bell is shattered, there is no use in tossing the crystals over, your shoulder, anything resembling salt or dandruff is socially unacceptable. Hinge of ceiling to wall, dark creases, wrinkles in an old blank face, rust seeps through, red and suicidal corners drip with tears, something caused them, you cannot remember. Wooden slats surround dusty horizontals, flat as a shadow, but stiffer. The dead cell, the dead cell, you can't even imagine a tree. Clothes crease and wrinkle, stepped on or over. Fuzzy inner skin of sweatshirt, brown cotton crotch, whiff of black bowels, too weighty to be swept away. Nobody would walk into this. Nobody would walk into this. Forty days in the desert, a mere vacation. The little man inside the radiator, 
nightly clanking his parched bars. Poor soul, he may never get out. There is no I in this game. You are it. Tag. You are it. The infection. Pass it on.
weekend at the high school when she heard a deep moaning from the alley behind Pop's malt shop. Having a sneaking suspicion as to its cause, Betty went into the alley. There, she found Moose and Jughead laying passed out with six empty five-gallon ice cream cartons between them. Moose groaned something about not enough hot fudge, while Jughead merely stuck his head inside the nearest carton. Anger and despair flooded through Betty's consciousness as she realized that Miss Grundy had driven Moose and Jughead to this with her campaign to have them kicked off the prom refreshment committee. Miss Grundy, of course, was unaware of the secret tradition that the refreshment committee participated in, and so couldn't know that the reason Moose and Jughead had stolen all her underwear was much more than a juvenile attack against her personally. Betty was startled from these thoughts when Veronica and Midge showed up, covered with sweat and dirt. We had to escape through the sewer pipe behind the school, Veronica said, when Mr. Weatherby almost caught us in the meat locker in the cafeteria. If only the sight of beef weren't so important to the secret tradition. Together, the three girls were able to get Moose and Jughead out of the alley and over to Archie's house, where Archie hid them in the guest room in the basement until they could recover from their ice cream binge induced by Miss Grundy's harassment. Archie and the girls then went over to Reggie's house. I've almost got the mixture of lard and paint ready, said Reggie to Archie. Archie then took out his pocket calculator and worked with it for several minutes. Everyone watched with anticipation until he looked up and said, we will be able to do the secret tradition tomorrow, after the big game. Everyone then began to excitedly talk about that moment which they knew would change their lives forever. But then the wail of sirens was heard outside the window and the door crashed open. Several FBI agents came rushing in and put everyone in handcuffs. We have finally captured the ringleaders, said the head agent into his radio. No longer will the evil tradition of the Riverdale High School Prom Refreshment Committee be a threat to national and world security. Before Archie, Midge, Veronica, Betty, and Reggie were led away, Reggie secretly used his foot to push the wastebasket an inch closer to the wall. The prearranged signal. Moose and Jughead would be able to finish the preparations with little difficulty.
Saluton, Helena. Saluton, Petro. Saluton. Helena, diru al mi, kio estas sur la tablo? Libro. Ah, yes. Sur la tablo estas libro. Kai kio estas sur la libro? Ĉu taso? Yes. Sur la libro estas taso. Kai diru al mi, kio estas en la taso? Kafo. En la taso estas kafo. Kafo en la taso. Ah, yes. Nun mi vidas. La taso estas sur la libro. Kai la libro estas sur la tablo. Ĉu la kafo estas por mi? Ne. La kafo estas por mi. Oh, mi comprenas. Ĉu plaĉus al vi kafo? Nun vi comprenas. Yes, mi petas. Ĉu kun lakto? Yes, mi petas. Kun lakto. Kafo kun lakto. Ĉu kun sukero? Ne, dankon. Sen sukero. Kafo kun lakto sen sukero. Jen. Jen kafo por vi. Dankon, Helena. Ne danginde, Petro. Petro, kia estas la kafo? Bona. La kafo estas bona. Ĉu la kafo estas forta? Yes, la kafo estas forta. Ĉu varma? Yes, la kafo estas varma. Ĉu Petro estas kontenta? Ĉu vi estas kontenta? Yes, mi estas kontenta.
elephant and a speck of dust in my skin. But it's so far away, it's hard to remember. Wait, there was an elephant and a speck of dust. She was in it's a car to remember. Box. She was in a car to see no one. Sunday morning, a fairly reasonable hour, sit over coffee with nothing, doing nothing, not that I have anything, it's something to do, I so look forward until they come, don't know what to do, deliberate a lot, sometimes, sit, drink, smoke, or something to do, don't do it. A point where it seems not much point in anything. Not today, anyway. You go to bed, get up, go to work, go to bed, get up, go to work, go to bed, get up, go to work. It's the weekend again. Get up and go to work. Worry about being productive. Worry so much that you can't. Or you think so much because it's always the same before you even do it, or if you begin, you should just keep on doing it forever, by sheer effort or busyness, by accident it will happen, what you're doing, the less you think about it, and so on.
writer of letters. There are no conversational interruptions. With letters to friends, you can do them justice. Remember what you wanted to say. Wait for a bad mood to pass. And edit out all the ums. With letters on difficult subjects, you can think things through and state your case clearly. You can tell the truth without fear of an immediate thrashing torrent of tears or confusing counter arguments. For the reader, the letter offers just as many advantages. A letter will wait while you take a shower or a nap or cook dinner. It's never offended if you set it aside to put a child to bed or walk the dog. If it's a letter from a nag, you can skim it. Or, if the letter is incomprehensible, you can call in an interpreter at no risk of offending the writer. to letters again and again, to clarify, to remember, to enjoy. They are at once a communication and a gift.
He kept his hair so short, a comb was silly. And practice killing was natural, like phoning his mother. He moved up, got enough rank not to count bodies or see blood, and dreamed of the war to end all wars. But his was a body of work, crouched, in a field of papers. He only ordered the guns. His heart bled not to have held one. I would like to have showed him that the lone assassin multiplied is war. Nations hardly figure when the smell of meat is human. Graves dug are a reality the earth accepts, and like the sun setting, others will rise and bleed away. We conceive no true ending, only change of seasons, each bringing dreamers who dream of war.
out to be just like you want it to, just like you want it to, always, it's always just like you want it to, isn't it? Well, Shadows moved without flesh, 
Sound a cosmic wind Once bells rang in walls To retreat in common fear But now retract Wish the boundaries down Doppelganger tugs the toes And off Fire beyond sense Time he spoke. He seemed to rise out of a state of contemplation, very like that state into which I felt I was drifting, from which it took so much to wrench myself, and yet he never moved. It seemed at all times alert. This distracted me, while, at the same time, I was powerfully attracted by it. There was the awakening of a need so intense that the very promise of its fulfillment contained the unbearable possibility of disappointment. Each time he spoke, I was drifting, I felt. He never moved. I was powerfully attracted. He seemed to rise. The awakening of a need, the promise of fulfillment, Possibility of the disappointment. He spoke. I was drifting. Never moved. Powerfully attracted. Awakening need. 
Whoopsie. Man, I just need promise. Fulfillment. Unbearable possibility. He spoke. He spoke. Authorities have resumed searching house to house in Warrington following the discovery of a single set of tracks in a swampy area near town. They have also expanded the search area. Several roads around the swamp are now being heavily patrolled, but pedestrian traffic is being allowed through. Two hundred officers remain on standby, prepared to move at a moment's notice. the heavy police presence hasn't lessened the fears of resident Nancy Gray. They're afraid. Everybody's afraid. Everybody's had a hectic weekend. And even the people like these, the families where the uh, husbands all on these perk teams out, they're afraid they haven't slept. Peaceful weekend. And even the people like these, the families where the uh, husbands all on these perk teams out, they're afraid they haven't slept. Everybody's wondering, everybody's had a hectic weekend. Everybody's afraid. They're afraid. Everybody's afraid.
everybody's afraid.